There was a Q&A not too long ago, maybe a couple of weeks that I did join. They did release all of the questions and answers. A few of my questions are at the end as well. So in this video, we're going to go over those because there are some interesting answers that the developers did give us. It is awesome that the developers are willing to do this with us. I think it's great that they're giving us an opportunity to ask our questions and especially to give us a way to kind of make our main concerns be known to them, which I think is one of the biggest things we've been wanting for a while. So I do like these. They're quite irregular. This is the second one that I've participated in that I'm aware of. So yeah, we'll go over that. I have a bunch just summon so i'm just going to do these initially uh one other thing is the game should be releasing in the next month i believe oh we hit a legendary straight away so that's cool so it seems like around july 13th is what we're expecting oh no shh did i get king heart no way man did i finally get i was literally just about to say that i'm going to be re-rolling <laughs> Oh my god, why? Ah, I'm, uh, well, King Haas, guys, that's awesome. Jesus Christ. I did not expect that. Together. you got to be kidding me. Wow, I mean, that's crazy. In my opinion as well, the North faction is going to get real strong soon. And part of the reason is some of the QA questions, and Falkyo especially. So yeah, that's wild. Wow, I can't believe I got a, a Legendary Lord. I'm so stoked. And he's the one I need the least, probably, because I've already smashed Gear Raid 2. But I mean, come on, it's it's King Haas. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked with that. That's awesome. Jesus. Wow, I've lost my trailer for. Anyway, what I was going to say is... What a badass. What I was going to say is there's going to be a new server. And it's going to be a global server. I think the global release is happening around July 14th, 16th. Someone said that the iOS store has actually revealed the actual release date but the release date they gave us I, I think it's around July 13 14 or something on the iOS store at the moment I'll try and find it and put a screenshot up somewhere so you can see what it currently seems to be but yeah it can change so we'll see what happens anyway when that happens I am quite likely just going to make a new account on the new server and I'll probably be live streaming a whole lot so if you're into live streaming then let me know below I'm kind of focused on making guides normally so I'm not really sure about live streaming but I think it could be quite fun it'll be a new server there'll be loads of new players joining so it'll be great for me to have a chance to play with other people and to answer questions so yeah I'll be starting a new account as Elowin, which is yeah, she's cool and also nice rates i've got anyway yeah i'll be starting a new account on the new server i'll make a new guild as well bucketeers and yeah we'll just see what we can do on the new server i'll be live streaming a whole bunch i'll probably take a couple of days off work and just be on twitch all day or something so you're welcome to join me drop in at any point whenever that happens i'll do some more update videos and let you know when that actually is occurring so it's great that i got a legendary lord when i'm probably going to be saying goodbye to this account fairly soon there is a good chance that they just merge these servers together in future but I, I don't know i feel a bit iffy about that because this soft launch has gone on for so long now it's like three years of soft launch some of the older servers are very old and they have some special perks that make them incredibly powerful so i really think they should keep them quarantined away from the new servers so yeah anyway long story short i'm going to be moving to a new server i'll probably keep this account as well I'm just going to finish off these summons and then we'll get into the developer Q&A where they answered a bunch of different questions. So that's the main focus of this video, though getting a Lord has kind of thrown me for a loop because I was not expecting that. I might try Haas as a DPS. I think Haas as a DPS will be fun alongside Falkia just boosting each other. If you're still progressing, Gear Raid 2, Haas is the GOAT. Okay, so this is the official Watcher of Realms Discord. Definitely join it if you are interested in seeing some more of the you know update notices a bit in advance. And sometimes you get a bit more detail than you do get in the in-game notices, such as this one. One. salute commanders i'm just going to kind of summarize this to make it a bit quicker new content they had some announcements at the start that they actually discussed rather than just going straight into the q a they did have some announcements of new stuff coming up so we've heard you when we are launching more content starting in june a new raid to learn more about it keep reading the void rift will be available you need to think more strategically about how teams should be assembled in this raid so obviously we know about this one this one has already been released it's been out just over a week now so most people have had a chance to play with it it's quite interesting i think it's quite fun it's nice to get more content obviously it's nice to have new stuff and it seems like it will be quite challenging for end game as well so it's nice to have stuff to work towards next up we'll also be enabling guild versus guild battles where you can battle head to head with another guild furthermore chapter 10 is currently a work in progress and we cannot wait to hear what you think of it soon but last but not least, we are currently working on having a brand new guild boss who will have new skills and give you new rewards. So guild versus guild is great. 
I prefer guild versus guild versus guild. The chaos that comes from having free guilds I think is really fun. So I hope it is that way personally. I just think it's more enjoyable. It is messier. You get weird alliances and you just get smashed because you're not in the alliance. But I don't know. I like the system. I think it's kind of a bit more uh, dynamic and diverse in what happens than just straight up one versus one guild. But we'll see what happens. They have mentioned it seems like you can defend your base and you can spend resources to send troops to attack the other base. But you can customize which ones you send. It's cool. I think it's a nice interesting system i'm glad it's not the same as arena because i think arena is not very good honestly i think it's great that they're trying to do something different with guild versus guild and i hope they're willing to iterate on it because they probably won't get it right first time and that's okay as for chapter 10 i think that's awesome i really really enjoyed chapter 9 i thought that was great fun so chapter 10 should be good fun as well so i think that's really promising be interested to see how hard that is as well because they need to do the hard and nightmare versions of these which is going to be crazy and finally they mentioned the guild boss they do state that this is probably six months away so don't count on this happening anytime soon another thing here is we're making adjustments to the buff and debuff mechanics in game and making them more reasonable i actually brought this up a lot in the few q a's and the interviews i've had with the developers and this may be an unpopular take but in my opinion i kind of miss the resistance and accuracy stats i know they're kind of boring in a lot of games like raid and summoners war etc but i think it's nice to diversify how heroes are built i think they should make debuffs stronger and they should have the resistance and accuracy mechanics in the game i don't know if it necessarily works exactly being a tower defense game but at the moment there's not really a lot of difference between builds for heroes because everyone just builds damage or they build tankiness or they build some healing and there's people always ask me how do i build this hero how do i build that hero and it's really simple there's you're either building a healer that scales on hp or attack and then you just split half attack or hp and then healing effect roughly like that it won't matter too much for a defender you just channel hp as much as you can and you pick up as much defense as you can in subs and for dps you go as much attack as you can you try to go up to 100 percent crit rate and when you're over 90 percent crit rate you can then start diversifying your attack into some crit damage and you want to ideally by the end of it have 100 percent crit rate and a 1 1 ratio of bonus attack and crit damage because they obviously crit damage scales off of attack anyway so that's kind of all you build right and then the rest of it's gear sets but they're second to stats so there's not really a lot of diversity in building heroes because there's just not enough interesting stats to build for so i think having accuracy and resistance would go a long way to making characters more interesting for example salazar his bleed is super important. You could make bleed a strong mechanic. You could actually make it do a load of damage and maybe would have to build Salazar for accuracy then. So I'm a big fan of making it more interesting in that way. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know. But I've pushed for this quite hard. So if that changes and everyone hates it, I'll take the L on that one. That's that's probably my influence at play. But we'll see what they do. I don't think they'll go that route. I think they're probably just making buffs and debuffs more prevalent. Because at the moment, they're kind of nothing-y. Providing you with more options to combine different strategies and skill sets for a more dynamic and engaging gameplay. So it seems like they're just trying to make buffs and debuffs more prevalent. They're also working on increasing buffs for attack speed and rage regen to make them stronger. So I don't know, it's hard to say. I think one of the reasons we undervalue attack speed and rage regen is it's so hard to see the gain because it's kind of a floaty stat. I mean, like, do you really know the difference between 50% rage regen and 80%? Because I have a loose idea, but it's so hard to conceptualize it. It's hard to know exactly how much return you get out of it. When it comes to damage numbers, it's a lot clearer. It'd be cool if they made these more transparent. I don't necessarily know if they need to be stronger. I think we just need to see the calculations make it a lot more apparent to us how it actually functions. We've made notes on your suggestions for gear items. Gear items are something that we are currently working on improving. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. Drop rates for Ancients will increase with various exclusive items available to drop. In the meantime, we're also going to optimize heroes' attributes, allowing different heroes to be equipped with different gear and artifacts, so that's cool. And they're breaking the limitations of only having a few gear items to choose from. You'll be able to know what artifacts and gear items to get for different heroes. So it sounds like they're trying to break up the monotony of the current gear meta where like I went over earlier, you know, it's so easy to gear a DPS, there's not much to it in terms of choice. So that's cool. I'm not really sure what they mean by exclusive items. I'm a bit concerned that this is going to be something they'll chuck into the Oracle's trial and only the whales will get it. I don't like exclusive stuff where they do it that way. I'm hoping it's not pay to win. Anyway, moving on. New heroes, new lords are coming for each faction. These new lords will have new skills as well as new lord skills, empowering each faction with different battle styles. Some new lords might even have the potential to change the status quo of their faction's current hero lineup, boosting weaker heroes. So on paper, that looks really cool. However, they did release North Lord, and he's a fighter, and I think he's more DPS focused than King Haas. But you can only get him through Ancient Summons, which makes him entirely like a pay-to-win limitation. 
you get Ancient Summons quite rarely and the amount you can get from spending is incredibly high. So I don't really... I like the idea of New Lords. I like the idea that they're different and you can do more with factions. I think it's a great idea because at the moment factions are very limited. If you need a DPS team, it's Nightmare Infernal for most things. Curse for AoE and Piercer for Airborne. And there's not really much crossover. You can't really use a Nightmare team in an Airborne area. An Airborne team won't work in the area content. And the Curse team will only really work in AoE content. Esoteria is kind of okay, but they're not really strong enough. They've got some good heroes, but not enough. Watcher faction is a joke, it's so weak. The North faction is good for gear raid 2 only, really. I mean, you can use them in other places, obviously, but like they're not going to compete with the other big factions. It's good that they're diversifying. I'm just scared that they'll put it behind Ancient Summons, and I'm pretty certain they will, because they did with the first Second Lord that they announced. So that blows. I hope that's not a trend. I really hope they backtrack on that. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, in addition, we are bringing in more heroes that will bring unique me mechanisms to the game. Aside from that, we'll also release more distinctive heroes for each faction uh, with a special focus on adding more heroes to the Chaos Dominion. No, we don't care about the Chaos Dominion. We don't, because we can't get them. They're so rare. You need so many summons. There's no pity. And yeah, I, just don't focus on the Chaos Dominion, guys. No one cares about that faction. It's a whale faction. Please, for the love of God. Okay, continue to develop more heroes suitable for Arena. So this is pay to win. They, they basically, the Chaos Dominion is a pay to win faction for Arena because they're specifically built to do better in Arena. So uh, I don't know, maybe their coffers are running dry, but I don't like this. The, the Chaos Dominion was not well received from my understanding and I don't like that they're focusing on it. Anyway, moving on, the Void Rift. We know what this is about. You roam around the map. There's different difficulties. You can get buffs and debuffs for stages. It's cool, but it's it's uh, we, we already know what it is, so I won't get into it too much. There's three difficulties currently, so maybe they'll add more. Guild versus Guild, so I touched on this earlier. The basic gameplay involves sieging battles against fortresses of your opposing side. You need to deploy heroes to defend your own fortress while sending demon soldiers to attack the enemy fortress. You may send different types of demon soldiers out depending on the heroes deployed by the other side. You don't have to worry about obtaining items to summon them as they will be obtainable from different raids. So it sounds like maybe they're adding new raids for them or is it existing raids will drop things for demon soldiers? It seems strange. It sounds like we'll have to spend outside currency in the guild versus guild, which I think is kind of interesting. It gives guilds a reason to pull together and to focus on farming to get strong offensive teams i don't know we'll see it seems interesting collect these items and train demon soldiers for attacking and conquering enemy fortresses in guild wars in addition you can also use your own heroes to strengthen the demon soldiers the outcome will be determined by how damaged the fortresses are on both sides so that's interesting anyway moving on to the q a session the guild stuff i think looks really interesting i want to see some kind of gameplay or some teasers of it i think it would be good if they opened up a test server and gave a bunch of people access to experiment with these things first i think that would help a bit but on paper i think it's interesting i'm glad it's not arena that's the main thing i'll say so these are a bunch of questions from the players so let's have a, a dive into these given the extreme impact and immense advantages provided by using third party software and apps and given that using them is also a breach of water of realms terms and conditions what will be taken against those who cheat the game by using them we don't tolerate any kind of usage of third party software such as quick macros we'll definitely look into this matter that you brought up and if it's necessary we'll also put in additional in-game monitoring and we'll set in place means to punish players who use such software in the future so i remember the gentleman asking this question and i think it was aimed around blue stacks now i personally don't see a problem with blue stacks so long as you were simply playing the game but the game will have a standalone PC launcher. So when that happens, then that's fine. I think the main concern around Bluestacks is, as mentioned here, you can create quick macros, so they can just infinitely have it restarting. You can do all kinds of things. You can multi-session, multi-instance the game. If you want to re-roll, you can run the game in four different Bluestacks instances, tie all the keybinds together, like multi-boxing, and you can re-roll four accounts at a time. So there's definitely some cheating and advantages you can get from doing this stuff. So I think it's a fair question. Um, I just, I'm glad that they have a PC launcher and they're not gonna, they haven't made a strong start so they're getting rid of blue stacks or anything like that. So I think this is a, a very fa fair and valid thing. When will the Watcher faction get a legendary Lord hero? Another good question. Good news, the Watch Guard faction will get its official legendary hero soon. She'll be a powerful healer who can help with rage regen and damage increase, making her a valuable asset in stages that are highly challenging. Oh, and she's a really pretty elf. So it might be the Heart Lady we've seen in some of the promotional materials. I don't really remember if she's an elf or not, but it sounds about right. A healer that can do rage regen and damage increase sounds like a Dolores Plus. So maybe she's the better version of Dolores. So yeah, she could be really, really, really powerful. Might be worth saving for her. Next, I heard something about these Guild Wars. I think you were talking about it, but how can we have a Guild War? Well, there are not enough. There's only one server that is functional right now. As of now, most of the old servers are nearly dead or allowed to be dead. So there is planning. So basically this is uh, one of the older players who's in one of the older servers where they aren't getting new players 
but as you can see there's a plan to merge most of the servers i think that's actually happening within the next week from today or the next two weeks from today but all of these current servers are being merged into one so every server is just going to be crushed together and we're just going to have a big mega server of the early access servers and then the global servers will be separate they'll have their own server which is why i kind of want to move over to those guys be nice to play with fresh players and you know do all that stuff so that seems to be handled fairly well i think they'll be happy with that especially the old players who now get to lord over everyone else that they've been playing for two years extra and have stronger accounts what is the actual drop rate for ancient mythic gear currently i'm sitting on nearly 1500 gear pools and no ancient gear drops fair question this is what we always want we want transparency we want figures and they said we're not going to give you any numbers pure luck factor we know it's luck we just want to know you're improving the rates that's fine but can you just tell us there's no harm in being transparent next up question five instead of making new heroes are you working the old heroes to make them better such as daemon i and others some of the older characters have seemingly been left behind and no one really touches them and it's a bit of a shame they keep releasing new heroes but there are a bunch of old heroes especially a handful of epics who suck such as cyclone daemon and i so they say where there are two epic heroes that are still pretty weak and lacking skills we are planning to fix them soon also plans to improve older heroes by making the mechanisms they bring more unique so that you can have a better game experience. So it does sound like there is a focus on improving buffs and debuffs, which will help a lot. I really do hope they tweak this a lot. I think there's a lot of potential to solve a lot of these problems if they improve the core combat mechanics. That's why I want them to tweak buffs and debuffs. Number six, Oracle's Trials. The rewards are very weak, not of interest. And over the course of several updates, they were degraded. Why was this done? Do you not play, want players to participate? We're aware of the issue with the Oracle's trial and we're actively monitoring the real-time data. We'll be making changes and adjustments to this based on the data we collected. Our goal is to make the experience better and have better rewards for you. So this is actually quite a telling answer from the developers, so I find it quite funny. Basically, it means that they're tracking the Oracle's trials. So they're watching heavily, especially the summon events, I can imagine. And they're trying to determine if their current changes are making players spend more. So if you don't like anything in, in to be honest, in any gacha, if you don't like the way things are going, don't spend money. That's the only way you can really vote in a gacha because they will be, they have metrics. They'll be watching, they'll have graphs generated per month, per patch, and they will be looking and analyzing to see what's generating them the most revenue. It's very simple. They, they, these aren't games made for patching, they're made for money, right? So I would definitely advise if you're not enjoying a certain direction, then don't spend money. My main thing is I encourage people not to spend money to buy stamina in any game because it's not fun. Buying heroes or summons is at least enjoyable for the person spending money. No one really enjoys buying stamina. But anyway, yeah, I completely agree with the question. The Oracle's trials were massively nerfed and I barely participate them in, in them myself now. Only if it's like an easy walk win because there's no one in my pool that's strong. All their answer is saying is that we're tracking the metrics and we're going to do what makes us money, which is to be expected. Number seven, will Deimos receive Awakening and be assigned any faction? We will give Deimos a faction very soon and they did. Remember these are from a few weeks ago with these questions. Deimos now does have a faction on the most up-to-date server and apparently he is incredibly strong again. I still don't have him, but apparently Deimos is now one of the best, if not the best, epic fighter just crazy amounts of damage and he's in the nightmare faction which is probably one of the best factions to put him in question about game servers there are a lot of servers now and players don't understand which ones are possible for new players to get and which ones are not for example 19001 have not seen new players for a long time but recently i've realized friend requests from low level players i hope they are newbies does this mean that registration to server 19001 is open you can tell exactly which servers have registration which ones don't and one more question my brother wants to start playing on ios will he be able to get to my server so we would play together here's a long answer planning to add more servers as we go right now we're actively working on a server merge there will be two major server sections depending on where you are located oh so they might split the russians and the west maybe or maybe it'll be north america and europe we'll see because there is a massive russian player base for this game and for each major server section, the Forerunner servers in the same section will share data with each other. And this way, no matter which server you join later, as long as you're in the same country slash region. So yeah, it depends how they do that. As your friend, you can venture into the game as you are in the same section. We release the iOS version on global release and they can enter the game with new servers setting up. So it sounds like they won't be able to join the old servers, but I, th I think they mentioned that they can, so we'll see how that goes. Number nine, okay, can you provide some insight into the healing formula used? Good question. Without some context, it's extremely difficult to make any meaningful gear changes as we are unable to assess the impact. So they, yeah, they, they keep tweaking this, but they don't give us the formula, so it's kind of hard to understand it without guessing a lot. Uh, we've decided that our healing mechanism is not perfect, and in certain situations, we believe that heroes who are responsible for finishing off the enemies are too overpowering, so they're referring to fighters, basically, 
correctly. That's why we made some adjustments, however for now we won't be revealing the exact details of the new mechanisms for each healing skill just yet. The only thing we can reveal is, is the healing attributes written about each gear item you can already see in the game. For example, your healing related to your attack attributes and the enemy target's max HP. So that will help guide to choose the most suitable. Just give us the give us the formula, it doesn't matter if, if, if we know it's changing anyway, why not give us the formula? Anyway, that's the first half of Q&A and here is the second half, nine more pages. Apologies, this is quite a long video but hopefully it's interesting. So question 10, why is the drop rate of mythic artifacts not even close to 20% and why are the new mythic artifacts essentially impossible to pull compared with the others? Currently there is something that is completely based on luck but we will also increase the drop rates for mythic artifacts soon. So I did a table, I got a bunch of players in the community to help me populate it. We got over 1200 artifacts, mythic artifacts pulled and we found the mythic artifact rate was about 18% not 20. So it's different but it's not wildly different. And the, the new artifacts were almost impossible to pull. So yeah, that was wild. And I did show it to the developers when I had an interview. And since then, we have noticed a change. In the last couple of weeks, it does feel like they have boosted the rates to be actually reasonable. And myself and a bunch of my friends have actually gotten some of the newer Mythic artifacts. So I do think they have fixed this, at least to some degree. But it does feel significantly better than it was. Question about private messages. Errors being displayed. Sometimes it happens that I choose to send a message to a player and a message window pops up from me to another player in general. We have written about it many times that the problem has not been solved. When will it be solved? Is it possible to add a private message window directly to the chat? Currently the dev team is looking into this issue. If you are willing, you can provide a game ID, la la la. Okay, yeah, so it'd be cool to improve the chat, the private chat especially, so hopefully they do fix that. Question 12, why does it feel like the rewards from Guild Boss have decreased and higher end rewards also never seem to be dropping? We haven't changed the rewards from Guild Boss in a long time. Right now it's just a matter of luck. We are aware of this issue, so we are planning to add a pity timer to it soon. So the guild boss is actually a weird one, because it has some incredibly good drops. If you can get a legendary sage soul stone, you're incredibly lucky, and it's actually a really nice thing that they drop in this game. So although there are issues with the game, they are actually still very generous as a whole, to be fair, especially comparing them to some of the other games I've been playing in recent times. Watch of Realms is still quite generous. You do get a lot of legendaries quite fast, and the access to a chance at a legendary sage soul stone is still pretty fantastic in my opinion. The guild boss, I think it's a very fair point. They say they haven't changed the rewards. They may not have changed the formula for the rewards, but they have increased the number of crappy items in recent times. Thankfully, they did drop out some of the worst ones, so it is a bit better now. They removed some of the worst ones. Qu questions about guild. At the moment, guilds only make sense up to level seven. Will there be an ex expansion of the stores assortment with higher levels? Will there be other activities related to guild level? If so, when to expect them? So basically making the guild levels more relevant and actually do something after level seven because beyond that there's not a lot and some of the older guilds are, are way past that point. We'll update the guild shop after releasing the guild versus guild mode, that's all we can say, but we are planning to implement more interesting designs in the future. For me this is kind of the problem of having servers up for three years on a game still in development. People who've been playing this game for three years, honestly it's early access and it makes no sense that your account exists to be blunt. It kind of throws a spanner in the works of the development because they have to cater a game that isn't fully released yet to a bunch of three-year-old accounts that want ever stronger and harder content. So that's one of the reasons I'm really keen on restarting on global launch. I want to play the game as it's intended, not as I am with a really stacked account before the game was out. I think it'd be more enjoyable playing it fresh. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that the new Guild vs Guild stuff isn't a level 8 and 9 in the shop because that's like a year away for any new guilds that start on global release. So... I don't think they should buckle to this stuff too much, in my opinion. I think if you're at the moment, your guild is well over level 7, you need to understand that that's not the intention. We are in soft launch servers that have been up way too long, and it has kind of wrecked the balance of things, in my opinion. So I hope they don't cater towards players who've been playing the game forever, and I hope they understand that the majority of their player base will be joining the game in July, hopefully. If they don't, then the game's not going to do very well. You need to build around the future of the game, not uh, a bunch of people who've been playing it forever. So yeah, in my opinion, I hope that this isn't going to be extending past level 7 with the most valuable stuff. I think it's good in general to build more rewards into the system, but um, I think maybe there should be passive rewards. Each level grants you more rewards from Guild Boss or a chance of better rewards from Guild Boss. I don't want them to lock stuff in the store behind level 8, 9, and 10 because that's, like I said, it's going to be an, a year away for any new guild starting on global release. Question 14, what was the purpose to implement overpowered bots in the arena? They are much stronger than our top tier players. Put bots in the arena mainly to help the BP balance. As we work on more commanders in the arena, we'll be, be taking out these bots gradually. Yeah, bots are kind of weird. Like 99% of the bots suck and you can destroy them easily. When I've been pushing arena and I'm in the top 10 on the server, you see so many bots because I think it can't find enough players for what it thinks you should be fighting. 
and the bots are just really dumb and they have really bad team comps and you can just smash them but every now and then you fight a bot that has like three epics that without awakenings and for some reason their Aswan just destroys you because he's not got real gear, his stats are just inflated. So sometimes the bots are just monsters. So it's definitely really funny how that works, it's not right. And 15, is this the final iteration of gear drop and enhancement quality? We won't be making too many changes to the current iteration of gear drops and enhancement quality, at least not in the short time, but we in the future will release more gear sets and develop easier to use features. I think the features and the quality of life in this game is actually really good, so they definitely do a great job of that. Gear as itself is kind of underwhelming in how it functions, but it's not the worst, it's just the rates are pretty poor. So hopefully they do make it easier to, to get gear that's good uh, or to enhance it, but we'll see how this pans out. Question 16, will the sale of epics, legendary heroes for diamonds be returned? If not, what to do with copies of epics? Plan to update the awakening shop in future. We'll add new items that you choose from, such as soul stones and so on. So this could potentially be really, really good. They are talking about improving the Awakening Shop with more Soul Stones. So at the moment, the only Soul Stone missing is the Legendary one. So if they grant a way to get Legendary Soul Stones, it becomes very, very powerful. So yeah, I'm interested in that. I think that's cool. I hope they haven't done it with Legendaries. You shouldn't really sell any Legendary heroes unless you've already got them at Awakened 5 because you don't know what content's coming and you don't know what changes are coming in patches. So it is kind of just for whales if they do that, but I mean, it's something, right? So I don't mind too much. Will a new guild boss be added if there's a mechanic to be tended? Or is it again copying or strengthening the exi existing one? Okay, they're asking, is there a completely new guild boss or just like Nightmare 5? As we mentioned earlier, there will be a brand new guild boss added in about six months. Brand new skills and there'll be brand new rules. So that's cool. It will break up the Infernal Nightmare meta, I hope. I'll be quite curious to see how that functions. I'm hoping it's more strategic, like maybe you need multi-hitting heroes or maybe you need debuffers or buffers. I hope it's not just a raw damage check. Maybe a survivability team is needed. So you need the North faction, you need some good healers or whatever. Question 18, can a training dummy or something similar be included, which allows the testing of a champion or teams of champions so you can assess the impact of gear changes, etc. Ideally with a damage or healing done breakdown by type. Another really good question and a good request. Something we've been thinking about doing for a while. We'll probably make it happen shortly after the global release. I hope they do. They're probably a bit anxious about giving us the ability to test their systems because then we'll know the figures. What is the minimum attack interval? So this is interesting. Does it depend on the hero and could this information be included in the game, please? Again, so many players are crying out for transparency. And these are, again, a really good question. We want more transparency because we want to be able to theory craft. So just give us the numbers. Currently, regardless of how many pieces of attack speed, related gear you equip, all heroes will have a in-game maximum of 40% attack speed. So yeah, I don't know exactly how that works. I don't get it, but basically 40% max attack speed. I don't know how that works out because I've definitely more than half my attack interval. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't understand how that works. I'm pretty sure my Falkyr hit a cap though at 0.9. So I should probably just look at that. Anyway, the dev team is working on adjusting the calculation for this value and introducing new heroes and gear items that are stronger in attack speed in future patches. So stay tuned. Question 20 regarding the legendary skill crystal situation. So some of the recent patches not too long ago, a bunch of them were removed from events as rewards and from Oracle Trials as rewards. And we keep having loads of new legendary heroes coming into the game. We have fewer legendary skill crystals. And now they've also added the extra four to five crystals required for basic attacks. So it's becoming incredibly hard to max upgrade the ultimates of heroes, which in my opinion makes it a lot harder to use certain heroes, especially for mages where the ultimate is probably the most important part. So it's making it very hard, especially for new players just starting the game, to actually get the full benefit from legendary heroes because they won't have the legendary crystals. Are there any plans to add more sources for these crystals or make any changes to make it easier for players to scale up? Regarding your question, we have two major ways to improve the situation. First of all, there will be legendary skill crystals available in the Awakening shop in the near future, so that's really nice. And second of all, we will also add a way for you to regularly obtain legendary skill crystals on a weekly basis, so that's really good. This was my question. I think they had a, a voice to text like auto AI or something because my uh, as you can see the wording has changed quite a lot which doesn't make sense but basically my concern was that they keep making it harder to get legendary skill crystals they add more heroes to the game so you need more to, to level them up and they have made the basic attacks take skill crystals so mages most of the time their power is in their ultimate but now maxing an ultimate is incredibly hard. So I think it's nerfing mages and it's nerfing new players especially. So I'm glad that they're doing something about that. Question 21. One of the other things I wanted to ask about was the Chaos faction. A large number of players on my server were quite unhappy with the idea of what is effectively seen as a pay-to-win faction where you can only get a handful of summons a month if you don't spend, but you can get over 100, nearly 200 summons if you do spend. The majority of whales or big spenders on my server just refused to spend any money during the last Ancient Summoning Crystal event. 
How have you seen the response? From the developer's point of view, are you happy with the Chaos faction and how it's been received? So that was my question again, the wording's a bit skewed, but basically a bunch of people didn't like the Chaos faction, a bunch of the big spenders on my server refused to spend for it as a way to send a message, and I was trying to find out from the developers if they were aware of that, and if it's changing their thoughts on the faction. And regardless of what they say here, obviously it's not, because they're planning to focus more on the faction and they, they explicitly said they're going to be adding more heroes to that faction. So they don't care, I guess, is the answer. The answer they gave us officially is introducing more free summoning chances in the future. Also notice that when players don't pay anything, they can still experience most of the spending related content of the game. That is true, but it's a balance, right? If, if you make the game too heavily pay to win, you lose your player base. You, you do need the free to play players to keep a game alive. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, they're trying to keep a balance between pay to win and, and free to play players. They want everyone to be happy. Generally, I think it's a pretty good job. The heroes in this game are quite strong and you do get a load of summons. So I don't think it's a terrible system they have at the moment, but uh, it would be nice if they had not done this ancient summoning stuff. I'm not a big fan of it. 22, again from me, my main criticism in the past and current with hero design is that heroes tend to just do damage. Basic attack is damage, ultimates make them hit harder, two passives that make their ultimates hit harder, and we keep getting many new heroes introduced that only do damage. Either they're going to be very good at dealing damage or they're going to be very bad at dealing damage. Either you can compete with Salazar, etc., or you can't, right? So we're adding loads of heroes to the talent pool or the summon pool, but many of them don't actually contribute. They're not able to provide anything new to the team, and it makes the game kind of stagnant. The new heroes coming out, in my opinion, are just a bit too simple. They should ideally provide more buffs or debuffs or unique mechanics. Are there any plans to add more buffs, debuffs, or characters focused on that to the game? As mentioned before, we're actively looking to add more buffs, debuffs, various mechanisms, and new heroes. In terms of hero design, the dev team will actively work with the art designers to create better visuals. In addition, we'll work on making it possible for heroes on your team to have more unique mechanisms that can be useful both on the battlefields and also in different game modes for example we are aware of the fact that healers and defenders in our game aren't very strong in many cases as of now and we're actively trying to improve that in our future patches so that's cool i'm glad they're aware of that defenders are kind of niche the gear raid 2 changes the 19 to 21 stages really did help with this problem before those stages were introduced you genuinely needed maximum of one defender and then you never used him but now they added the gear raid 2 stages and the other stages it does really diversify which heroes you need as well as the new Rift content and the Chapter 9 does actually massively improve the value of having defenders. So they have done a great job already and improving that. And I'm really curious to see how the Chapter 10 goes, how Guild Boss's new stage goes, and how Guild versus Guild goes. I think there's a lot of potential to solve a lot of the things in this game. I really do think they are pushing in a direction that might work. I, I think the game at a base is really enjoyable, so I'm, I'm hopeful. I think they are working pretty well on this. 23, I've been following a few other games that are also in development and are leading up to their release, and they've put a huge amount of effort and resources into pulling in content creators. Seems to be very successful, their communities have grown massively, and we're leading up to our global launch for the next couple of months from the sounds of things, and it feels like our community is still fairly small. Are there any big marketing plans that are underway or about to start so we can expect to see a larger influx of players? This is, again, my question, I just I was concerned that the community for Water of Realms is still pretty small and I felt like they weren't doing enough to grow it, especially with global release so soon. So the answer was we're planning to actively recruit more content creators in the second half of this year, so hopefully by then we'll have a large growth in the community. So that's cool. I have heard some murmurs from other content creators that I've loosely been talking to in other projects and they are aware of the game. Most of them don't seem to know that you can actually play the game right now, which is kind of telling of the, of the current marketing, but I think that's good. My advice, if, if you're watching this video for some reason, you've been staying around the whole length because it's quite a long video, wait until global release, don't start yet. If you start now, you're gonna be stuck with a bunch of incredibly powerful accounts that you have no chance of competing with. If you start the game now and you're up against even my account, you're probably never gonna get anywhere near as strong as me. The gear I've farmed is really excessively strong, and the heroes I have and the awakenings I have on the heroes, it's really powerful stuff. So competing with me is going to be hard. And if they're merging us with servers that are three years old, my account's like nine months old, there's no way you'll ever be able to rank Overlord in the arena and that will lose you some vital summons. So in my opinion, if you're even, if you've been playing the game for a few weeks, if you really enjoy the game and you want to play it long term, I think starting on global is better. Anyway, that covers the Q&A section. Overall, I think the Q&A was pretty good. I think they answered the questions quite well and they gave us a bunch of assurances that they're going to be working on and fixing quite a few things. So I'm interested to see what they actually do and what they've said they've done because there's obviously going to be a divorce between those two things. But I certainly think there's potential to solve most of the current issues we have with the game. It just depends if they're willing to do that or not. So that remains to be seen. 
but for the time being I think it's pretty good I like that they've done that I like the transparency I think again my main issue with things is I, I want them to be more transparent on the whole I think it's moving in a good direction so I give it a thumbs up I think it was good informative it's nice that they host these events thank you very much for for doing it I appreciate it from the dev team and yeah I'm gonna wrap the video up there because it's been a very very long video thank you guys very much for watching have a lovely one take care and bye bye